I am Case 314 of Cagayan de Oro, and this is my COVID story. When the news about COVID-19 entering the Philippines broke out earlier this year, I was one of the employees who was prioritized to be given the work from home setup. Um, it's because um, I was pregnant back then. Not only that I was pregnant, I was immune compromised, which means um, uh, my immune system was messed, was messed up. I was actually diagnosed with uh, reproductive immune disease, uh, specifically uh, with antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, category 1. In a simpler sense, APAS category 1 means that my immune system is messed up. It cannot recognize that the baby is growing inside my body. So during my entire pregnancy, I was taking several medicine and I had to take uh, daily shots of anticoagulants. So I was diagnosed as APAS category 1 and I was treated as APAS category 2. So since then, I never left the house except during my monthly checkup, which was once a month back then. And also, I really practice um, basic or standard health protocol. So whenever I went to visit my OB and I came back home, I would immediately go to the back door to have access to our bathroom at the back. And I would immediately take a shower and also change my clothes before entering the house and mingling with my family. So I was very careful with my actions. I always wear mask, I always wear face shield whenever I went outside. And even when we walk outside, we practice social distancing. I was pretty sure it's impossible for me to contract COVID-19, but I was wrong. From August 28th to August 30, I experienced body malaise. At first, I thought it's because of my work because I exhaust my body during that week because we had a deadline to beat. So I thought it was just a simple um, over fatigue that would go over after a day of rest. So I just rested, but then when it continued for the third day, and I develop a high-grade fever of 38.4 and it won't actually go down. That was the time that, you know, we, we decided to go to the hospital. At the same time, when I developed the high-grade fever, I was feeling the consistent pain, like it's like a pre-labor. So to be sure, we decided to just check in to the hospital and contact uh, my OB. So at the hospital, I was given um, fever-reducing medicine and the same day when we went to the hospital, uh, my fever went away. Also, I was subjected to an x-ray and my result fortunately uh, yielded a clear result. So there was no accumulation of some sort of pneumonia or something. So I was confident somehow that probably the fever was just, you know, a normal fever that most people would uh, have um, but then since the hospital protocol says that whoever had a fever might have a COVID they really encourage the patient to undergo swab testing the following morning uh, my OB decided to give me inducing medicine so we have to hasten the process of my labor so I can bring out the baby during lunchtime I was swabbed to be honest, the pain was, um, I would say, unbearable on my part, but I had to endure it. Because um, going through the pain from my pregnancy and then to the labor, I had this anxiety when it comes to the pain. You know, the daily shots would give you a thought that it's going to be painful, so I, I, I fight it off. Um, so when I was swabbed, I was also experiencing the pain. It's hard to manage the two pains going on at the same time. After which, they also monitored my baby. Okay, they did the NST or the stress test for my baby. And unfortunately, the baby's heartbeat drastically dropped. We barely could hear it actually. So I was very worried that we decided to agree with the emergency CS. 
eh. But then everything happened so fast. Like I had an active labor already, so I was brought immediately to an isolated um, operating room. Since I was already considered as a COVID positive, everyone around me was wearing PPE. It was not a normal setup. They had to make it up that day for me. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I was the first patient in that hospital who delivered the baby, um, knowing that you are a COVID positive. During the delivery, I, I would say it was, it was more painful than the labor plus the swab and everything else because I was actually very exhausted already having the pre-labor for two days straight that I was not able to sleep properly. So, pushing was really challenging for me. I had to do it on my own. I thought you know, someone could help me push the baby uh, from my tummy, but then it was not allowed anymore. So, I had to catch my breath and then push. I did several times, but then it, I really couldn't do it. So, I was in the uh, brink of telling the OB to just you know, cut me open. But then she said, just push because the baby was almost there. And so, I was trying to push the baby many, many times already that I was just like staring at my OB and then the assistant and then they were giving me instruction. I was staring blankly at them. At the back of my mind, I was already praying to God to please help me. Just bring out the baby safely. At that moment, I had a, I had a sort of um, agreement with God that if one should be spared let it be the baby let the baby live so I pushed the baby for one last time with all my energy and it was just the perfect timing because the baby defecated right outside of my womb had it been delayed for a couple of seconds she could have defecated inside and it would result for an infection so I'm very lucky and very blessed that both of us were spared but then it was not the end it was not the end since I was COVID positive uh, suspected patient already that evening I was isolated my baby and my husband uh, were separated from me that evening my baby um, drank milk from generous mothers who, do who donated their breast milk uh, to me. I was not able to breastfeed my baby except during the unang yakap. So I was in a separate um, hospital room for two days while waiting for my result. And finally, after two days, the result came. My OB called and she said, Shell, the result came. So I was happy like, oh yeah good. Uh, Shell, you're positive. You have COVID. So when I heard it, I was playing cool. Like, like the same, I was trying to ignore it or I was downplaying it. So I said, um, okay, doc. Uh, oh, positive. Alright. Uh, okay, doc. Thank you so much. And then I dropped the call. So I called my husband about it and then, you know, I casually told him that uh, Ram, positive on result. So what are we gonna do? Uh, we just have to wait for their instruction to us. So at that point, I have no idea what's gonna happen. I was told that I have COVID-19 and that's it. it. It did not sink in yet or I was in the denial stage. Uh, like, you know, probably it was wrong. Probably, you know, they would call me and tell me na, oh, there's, uh, there's, there's a mistake in the result. You were actually negative. So, it's hard for me to accept it or I don't want to accept it at that time. So, when I called my sister next, that's when everything came um, into reality. So, I told my sister, uh, I am positive. And immediately, all the emotions came rushing in. And hearing the stories of people who had COVID-19 or reading stories of fellow mothers who had 
COVID-19 or who contracted COVID-19 and they did, ended up, you know, in an unfortunate state. I was trying to prepare myself to to have the same fate deep inside my my mind. I might end up. So I have to to leave some you know instructions to my sister like if something happens please take care of the baby please take care of my children my family although they've been telling me to to just have you know to have faith to have to be strong at that point it was very difficult to it was very difficult to to accept the news of me being a positive patient and I was trying to get some assurance that I would leave luckily um, our doctor friend told me that there's a cure for that I would be healed but then um, I still had so many doubts that day many uh, people called up coming from the DOH and then the city health office confirming my my identity asking me what happened contact tracing and so on so I was answering many calls and I was telling them over and over again what what really happened and it was very difficult for me to think where did I get the virus I was trying to trace my steps backward but it's hard to trace where I got it and that's that ad added up to my to my um, anxiety that added up to my burden that day you know when you try to figure out something and you couldn't figure it out it's it's suffocating that evening another bad news came in my daughter and then the niece of my husband will be brought to another facility because they were part of the direct contact so at that point I was like I was very guilty because you know it I might have infected somebody else and also a friend of us who helped us uh, go to the to go to the hospital they were also contact traced and you know they just helped us and then they will be um, isolated as well so the, the guilt feeling was there you know I felt that I was responsible for their uh, for their illness as well we also had no idea on what to bring what to prepare since it was an emergency or since it was very abrupt we only brought what we could that evening I was brought to a facility for COVID positive my baby was left in the hospital under the care of private nurse because uh, she had an ABO incompatibility so she had a very high bilirubin so it was very difficult or dangerous for her to be discharged and to be brought with me to the facility that evening I couldn't sleep I was asking God I kept asking God why did it have to happen to me um, what went wrong I was taking care of myself. I was very careful of all the people who would contract the virus. Why me? Why my family? Other people, I was thinking other people were not even careful enough. They were not wearing, you know, um, face masks, face shield. They were not washing their hands. But then they never contracted the virus. I was very careful. We were very careful. But. COVID-19 still entered um, our household. I was looking for answers and I, and I did not receive any answer yet. I also talked to God, Lord, are the pains not enough? The pregnancy itself was painful because I had to take daily shots. I had developed already anxiety whenever I see syringe because I had to do it on a nightly basis. So. You know, the pain seemed so endless. The pregnancy was painful. The, in, the labor was painful. I was induced. The swab was painful. And then now my family was isolated from me. And it was also painful. So I was asking God to please stop it. But then 
it felt that my plea fell on a deaf ear. But deep inside me, I have this growing hatred. Because it's hard for me to accept the things that are happening around me. So I, I, I kept asking God on my knees while I was at the facility. I kept telling God, sorry Lord, if I did something wrong, please forgive me right now. So, you know. So all this would come to an end. Whenever I prayed for this, I would yield an opposite answer. I prayed to God to have a negative result, but then I got a positive result. I prayed to God to have my family spared, that they may not have contracted the virus, but then the result came and they were also positive. So I could only see the misfortunes happening in my life. And I was really blinded by hatred. I was blinded by anger. And I was blinded by my own stubbornness. I could not see the blessings that God has given me all throughout that journey. And then on our third week in confinement, I thought I would get my way this time because things were quite happening um, in favor of what I want. And I thought that was the time that I would get what I want. But still I failed. So since they wanted a negative RT-PCR result, we had to be re-swabbed many times and it was our fourth swab already. So all those that I did to actually tell the city health office that according to these guidelines, we should be released, we should be discharged, all went into vain. Like They did not allow us to leave the facility unless we get a negative swab result. And so at that week, I was very frustrated. Like We really wanted to go home because it was more comfortable at home. So all those frustrations became the tipping point. Everything had to be spilled. I told God, Lord, this is it. I surrender. Like There's nothing that I could do. So all we could do was just wait for a negative swab result. So that evening, I actually counted the blessings instead of the misfortunes that I thought I had. And true enough, those blessings outweighed everything. I had to be thankful that my family was asymptomatic. They did not develop any symptoms related to COVID. It means they, had, um, they were pretty much okay. My symptoms were getting better. I was on my way to healing and recovery. Donations were coming in, like I did not expect my colleague would actually, or my university would actually have this um, um, donation drive and then they have given me money and they have supplied us with what we needed. My husband's office already sent a lot of uh, fruits and supplies for us to consume while we were at the facility. People kept calling and then they kept sending love gifts, and then they sent us even um, meals that we wanted. When we went to the facility, we were all only carrying, you know, one bag each. But when we left the facility, my baby stuff were a lot. We brought home three more bags because friends kept sending babies things because they knew that we were, we were unprepared for it. My baby's Billy Rubin was um, stable already. My baby, who was with me, did not develop COVID-19 symptoms. And most especially, my family and I are together. So all those experiences helped me realize one thing. I would always remember what my spiritual mentor told me in this quote. When I try, I fail. But when I trust Him, He succeeds through me. All my efforts ended up as a failure. But the moment I trusted God, everything turned 180 degrees. I felt that God was really there. When we received the result coming from the city health office, all of us 
me, my husband, and Denise turned out negative from COVID-19. After four swabs, finally God gave us what we wanted. That only happened after we have given up all the efforts that we could do. I learned my lesson the hardest way. COVID-19 was God's way of fixing my character, of refining me, so that when things happen, I'll be able to remember His goodness to me. And although I realized that I made a very huge mistake of not trusting God, I think I still have chance to fix my ways and I still have the chance to encourage other people and most especially I still have the chance to trust Him whenever problem comes our way. I may be the case 314 of Cagayan de Oro but little did I know that my case number itself tells God's love for me. When 314 is jumbled, it spells as 143. It's God's way of telling me, Rochelle, I love you. Rochelle, I love your family. And so may this story become your inspiration as you are going through trials and temptations, challenges in life. And may we have a stronghold of our faith in God because He never left us and He never forsake us. And that's my story of COVID-19.